Hey everybody, it's me, you know, Candy. Um, I just wanted to share some things with you guys in reference to me having my YouTube channel, different things that I encounter on a daily basis. Um, just take you guys with me on my journey to how I became the person that I am today. And believe me, it took a lot of work. Um, a whole lot of work. But hey, um, I think it's an amazing thing when you get to see your growth, your personal growth. So let me just tell you a little bit, uh, just a smidget to how I got here today. All right. So in um, what? 2015, I had a rough patch. I had lost everything that I had worked for. So I thought, but I had lost everything that I had worked for. Um, I had ended a 17 year relationship um, with my daughter's father. Um, glory be to God, cause that man taught me a lot. Um, so yeah. <laughs> And um, I felt like life couldn't get any better. I didn't know what to do. I was a fish out of water. Um, just looking for, I didn't know what I was looking for. Let's keep it real. I don't know. But, you know, it was like, it wasn't the average breakup. It was like a divorce because um, I was met him when I was 12 and we split right before I turned 30. So, um, it was hard and I didn't think that I would make it. So with losing that relationship came a lot of things with it. I, um, lost a job because, um, he had a relationship with someone whom I didn't know about her. She didn't know about me. He played the victim and she did some things because of what it is that he did or whatever he told her, you know, whatever shit dudes do. Um, so it resulted in me losing everything that I had worked for. And um, I didn't know what to do. Um, after that, I mean, I continued my life, you know, I had to push forward. Things had to go on. And, you know, just 2015 was a really, really rough year. The end of 2015 was a really, really rough year. Going into 2016, 2016, mm, it was still rough, but, you know, I got through it. It was an adjustment. It was a huge adjustment, but I was able to make it through. You know, I kept on going. I had faith in God and I prayed and it just seemed like things weren't moving or, you know, how you could pray and be like, Lord, you know, da, da, da. but then you still thinking about all the fucked up shit that happened and you start to blame, um, some of us blame God. Oh, the Lord wouldn't let this happen to me if, you know, blah, 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 and things like that. You know, that I was that one. Um, but as time went on, um, I had someone very close to me throughout my entire life. My favorite cousin in the whole wide world, my, my Laverne, you know, she might kill me for that, but Hey, um, she was there. She's been there since I was little. It was a lot of things that she was saying to me through over the years where she would always say, don't worry. One day you'll understand it. One day you'll get it. One day you'll know what I'm talking about. I used to be like, yeah, because mm -hmm, I wanted to do things my way. Still do things my way. But, um, however, with that being said, she was there throughout everything, through any ups and downs, through everything. And, you know, Helen Baylor, um, she has a song called Helen's Testimony. And she says, I had a praying grandmother. She was a drug addict who, you know, was doing what she wanted to do, hit rock bottom, and then told God she ain't want to do it anymore. And through all of that, her grandmother prayed her through that. So yeah, that's what my Laverne has been to me. Um, I didn't have a praying grandmother. I had a praying cousin. Okay. I mean, be out of this world, a praying cousin. So get you one. Oh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she was everything. She's been there. Um, I, 
I was, like I said, I, I was lost. You know, everything that I had once knew as far as my family, for me and my child and all the things that I had wanted, it was shattered. It all went away in this 17 year relationship. And I um, lost my career behind it. Um, so basically I lost my career behind loving the wrong person for so long. So with that being said, I had to come to the conclusion that, you know what, Candace, you cannot blame God. You cannot blame anything. You cannot say, oh, he did this or he allowed her to do this. or No, I had to take responsibility for it myself because I played a huge part in everything that happened to me. So I am a strong believer of what you put out into the universe, you'll get back. Anything that you think negative, positive, you manifest it, you bring it into your world. I'll get into that later on, maybe another video as to how it works for me and how I know that what I put out into the world in the universe, hears it, it comes back. Um, so anyhow, so yeah, so that's how that happened. So when you, like I said, in 2016, things started to pick back up and you know, everything was, everything was going okay. You know, it wasn't the best. I was still battling with, oh my God, you know, I lost my family. I, you know, oh my goodness, how could he do this to me? You know, all that sh shit we do. Um, and then it wasn't until 2007, freaking teen, <laughs> that I became so grateful and appreciative for every thing wrong that happened to me. When I look at it now, the things that I went through in 2015, the drastic blow that I took in 2016, baby, you could give it to me five more times. Do you hear me? If that, if I would, if I would have known that that was going to have this and where I am now waking up with joy, so much joy in my heart, happy, getting to know me, knowing that anyone that I deal with or anyone that I meet, you will not be my happiness. You will add to it because I'm already happy with me. All right. So honey, it could happen again. <laughs> but um yeah so you know he he taught me a lot you know shout out you know shout out to him um so yeah this is what I really like to talk about I want to I want to talk about um relationships friendships um just anything you know everything also when you're trying something new cuz this is new for me when you're trying something new whether it's a different job a new career or a promotion people are going to always have something to say always have something to say and that's the one thing that i had to constantly remind myself you know people are going to always have something to say hey candace after you write your book someone's going to always have something to say it's going to be somebody on your timeline or one of your facebook friends and they go say oh god here she go what she got to do but guess what sometimes they be the same people that go back scroll click the button and they listening Okay, so with that being said, go for everything that you want in life. Um, if you're starting a new business, if you're trying something new, a lot of times you have to protect yourself and you have to protect your dreams. You can't tell everybody what you're going to do. I know you want to. I know we want to, but you can't. You just cannot tell everybody what you want to do sometimes because you don't know who's praying against you or you don't know who is. Um, secretly hoping that you don't succeed. You know what I'm saying? So that's another reason why I keep a lot of things to myself. So like I said, so 20, 2015, things went haywire. 2016. Um, I'm sorry, 2015, things went haywire. 2016 got a little better. Um, throughout that, I lost a lot of friends. But I don't know if I could call them friends because, like, some people had already fell by the wayside before whatever happened to me in 2015. But along my journey, I met some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, and a lot of those people I still talk to today. Um, so, yeah. Anywho. Um, I not only lost a relationship. I not only lost a career. 
I also lost friendships. Some of those friendships were people that I've known for years and, you know, and it's fine. And some of them were people that I didn't know. However, that also made me appreciate the people that are present in my life today, because throughout everything that has ever happened to me, um, childhood on, on, you know what I'm saying? I have some people that have been there, you know, and shout out to you guys. You know who you are. Um, I can't blast y'all, but shout out to you. Um, I really have some good people. It's not a lot, <laughs> you know, but I really have some people that really been here with me through everything. It has not turned their back on me, not one time. Also, throughout that process, I have encountered people that I helped. Um, I do everything out of the kindness of my heart. But the one thing that I battled with was how is it that I could do all this good and put all this good out and be here for people and do things for people. And these are the same friends, people, family, relationships or whoever that are supposed to care about me. How is it that they, they act as though I don't exist or how is it that they could walk away from me and leave my life? Or how is it that they could only call me when they want something? No, I, I wasn't going for that. I truly wasn't going for that. So, um, again, it takes time. But I had to learn that, hey, Candace, you continue to sow your seeds throughout this earth. You aren't perfect. You don't change who you are because of the people that you encounter. Everybody that is in your experience, they're either going to grow with you in your experience or they're going to grow away from your experience. And however it goes, that is okay. You know, I have people that they have not done anything to me. You understand? We just don't talk. I'm not mad at them. They aren't mad at me. You know, you 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 just can't grow with me where I'm going, you know, and, and that's fine. I've had some people that I've dealt with, you know, relationship wise or whatever you want to call it, a friend or whatever. I don't know if you leave it up to me. I've really only had like one relationship my entire life because I was with the same guy for forever. I met other people, you know, when we went through our things, but I really only had one one secure relationship. I mean, that one dude that could come take me away from any and everybody I was with. But when that happened, I wanted to take the time to know me. I am not a person that jumps from relationship to relationship. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care how good the sex is, how good we talk, how many I miss you, good morning texts, how great you are to me. I don't care about that. If I'm not ready to be in a relationship with you, I will not be in a relationship with you. And I think that's what a lot of people get hooked up on. So, you know, I can't say these things to you, like be weary of these people because I don't know everybody has different things and everybody shit work out different for them. But for me... I'm very, very weary of people who go from relationship to relationship. Like I was in a 17 year situation. He went his separate ways and he dove straight back into a situation. Now me, I'm like, damn, we were together 17 years. How do you just go and do what you do? But that ain't none of my business. You know, what you able to do ain't, I'm not able to do. I encountered someone else who was like, oh, I love you. I'm in love with you. And you, da, 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 da. boom, we stopped talking and they're in a whole nother situation. So it's like everybody's definition of love or being in a relationship, you know, everybody, everything is different. And I don't work like that. I am not going to just jump and dive and move from one situation to another situation because what? I'm taking baggage with me. Everywhere you can replace the person, but the one thing you cannot replace is you. You take you everywhere you go. So it didn't matter to me who the person was. I'm still going to be the same. So no, I'm not about to just be with you because you're doing good and we're getting along and everything is just so peaches and cream. No, you're going to, you, you got to work for it. Another thing, like, you know, people, it's like reading a book. You have to um, take the time to get to know people. You know, I look at everything like it's a book and someone else told this to me. You look on a, you look at a book and most people look at the cover and might look nice. It craps your attention. You might flick over, open it up, flip on the back, you know, skim it a little bit to see what it's going to be about and it strikes your interest. You might read a couple pages and it's good. All right. But if you take the time to read all 
200 and something pages or however long the book is, it would help you not encounter some of the things that you went through in your relationship. Such as if you would have took more than six months to a year to really get to know the person, you would have known that he's a liar or you would have known that she's a liar or you would have known, you wouldn't even be like, oh my God, I can't believe they did this to me. Well, had you took the time to read the whole book and not skim through it and pick out the pages you liked, you might have known a lot sooner that he or she wasn't no good. So, anywho. So, 2017 has been wonderful for me. I wake up every day happy, ecstatic. I have a whole nother career path. I also have my own career thing that I started and it's pretty good thus far. Like I said, it's new and um, I love it. I wouldn't change anything that happened to me. Um, I know a lot of people may be like, oh, dang, if I could do it, I would. Da, 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 da. No, I wouldn't change anything that has happened to me in my life at all. Um, I would go back and rescue young me because the 30 year old me today, the woman that I am today, whoo, she wouldn't dare have went or tolerated a lot of the things that she did or allowed some people to come along, you know, and did these things for people or just been there for everyone or always putting everyone else before um, herself. I wouldn't do that. I, I couldn't do that. I also believe that everyone that you encounter, you encounter them for a reason. So in the midst of me, I'll give you an example. So in the midst of me going through what I was going through in 2015, I met this remarkable woman. I won't put her name, you know, but I met this remarkable woman and she helped me with different little things that I was trying to do with one of my career paths. And I was telling her, you know, talking to her and she, she heard some of what I was going through and I began to listen to her and everything that she said, everything that she had gone through, you know, it was like looking in a mirror. We had the same experience, like with a little twist, but it was the same. So it's like, oh, you got to pay attention sometimes when people are talking to you because sometimes God will have somebody come walk right into your life and all you got to do is listen so you don't have to make the same mistakes or so that you can learn from, from what's going on with you and, and you can do a whole nother avenue. You got you to gotta listen. So I pay attention to everybody. I don't let everybody touch my head. Hey, how you doing? No, I don't let everybody touch me. Hey, no. Positive vibes only. I don't want your energy on me. I don't know what God you pray to. You. I don't know what you do at night. I don't know what you do in your life. I don't want none of them demons jumping into me. So don't touch me. Just say hey from afar. But um, yeah. So again, we had some of the same experiences. And I was like, wow. And she taught me some things with me just listening. So um, but yeah. That, that was great as well. Um, again, another time uh, going through my situation, I had no faith. I said out my mouth, oh, God got this, but I didn't believe it. So it's like, you have to believe it. You can't just say it. You have to believe it. You have to know that in your heart of hearts that no matter what you go through, no matter how hard it looks, that God got you. If that's who you believe, God got you. God is love. You understand? He's not chaos. He's not dysfunctional. He's not violent. He is not, um, he is not any of those things. Anything jacked up that you can think of, any word you want to use, God is not those things. God is love. Nothing but love. Going through that, I felt like, oh my God, you know, I did all of these things right. Why is this happening to me? He wouldn't let this happen to me. And it was like, girl, you can't blame him. You better shut up and check yourself. And that's what I did. So right before I started to turn 30, 
I started changing. Um, I turned 30, February. Everybody that knows me knows my birthday's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But um, right before I turned 30. And, and to, before that, that prior year of 2016, I prayed. I prayed every day. And I said, God, please remove anybody from around me that is not for me. Please remove all one-sided relationships. Please remove anybody that's using me out of my life. Remove anybody that want to be with me or anybody, you know, with no good intentions. Put them away. Like, shoot. But when those things started to happen, I was like, Oh, this one is phony. This one is this. Or um, I can't believe him. Or whatever it was. And then it wasn't until this year where I said, oh, no. Candace, you prayed and you asked God to remove those things. To remove these people. So why are you saying what you're saying? So it clicked one day and I was like, thank you, God. So if you ever feel like God is not listening to you or your prayers aren't answered, sit back and try to remember some of the things, even if you can't remember all things, sit back and think about and remember the things that you prayed about and the things that you asked God for. I'm pretty sure he answered them. I'm a thousand percent sure he answered them. So, I realized Lord had answered every prayer that I had ever prayed back five years ago. You know what I'm saying? So, again, it works. Be patient. He he works at his own time. And depending on where you are, what you believe is, sometimes it could work quicker for you than others. It's all in where you are. With that being said, I realized that God didn't allow all those things to happen to me. Some of them, but not all of them. Because you got to learn in order to get through it, you have to grow through it. I had to forgive, you know. The situation that occurred to me, one of the hardest things. I remember um, one of the people I was good friends with today, I used to talk to her like, I don't know. How do I know if I'm forgiving somebody? I don't know how to forgive. And it's like, you don't know. Or you ask God to show you because you're going to block your blessing. So that's what I did. I forgave a lot of people. I forgave people who didn't even know they have been forgiven, you know, because you don't have to let everybody know, you know, you, you don't, you don't have to let everybody know you forgave them. Um, uh, well, I know I didn't, but I did. I had forgiven a lot of people. I had prayed and asked God to just continue to make me a better person to lead me down the right path with any and everything that I may want to do. And he's done that. He's still doing it. And I love it. Blessings, everything, life has been pouring into my life. And even if I'm not where I want to be or where I feel I should be, I damn sure ain't where I used to be. Okay? Far from it. But, um, yeah, so everything takes time. Everything takes time. So I think what happened to me, matter of fact, what I know what happened to me was I was walking by sight and not by faith because it's hard to see the outcome to something when you're in the midst of the storm. When you're in the midst of the storm, you, you can't see nothing but that storm. You know, I couldn't see no way out of what had occurred to me other than what had happened and what I was going through. 
So I was like, oh, you ain't really walking. You ain't really using the faith thing too much because dumb girl, you feel like you can't even make it through, whatever, whatever. So I was like, dang. So I turned around and I began to have more faith and I began to pray, give me more faith. Help me come to terms and at peace with everything that has occurred in my life. Childhood, adulthood, motherhood. Let me come to terms with all of those things. And I asked God to um, forgive me and love me unconditionally and forgive me for all those things that I allowed to come into my experience. See, true forgiveness starts with yourself. You have to forgive yourself first for anything and everything. And that's what I did. Um, I reached out to some people throughout this whole journey from 2015, maybe even before 2015, up until now, and just said, hey, I was probably rude as hell. I'm still her, though. She's still in there. Don't, you know, Natasha come out fast. <laughs> but I, 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 I just had things that I wanted to say, and it had nothing to do. I didn't care how they would respond. I didn't care how they would react. I didn't care if they would even respond. It was for me. It wasn't for you. It was for me. So I did that. Um, they weren't receptive. I don't know. You know, some of the responses were like, mm, thanks. And um, some of them were like, wow, like, I'm glad. I'm glad. Like, and... Some things may still be the same. But um, outside of that, I didn't care. I didn't do it with any motives. I didn't have any intentions. I did that shit for me. I did it all for me. And that's all that had mattered to me was me doing it for me. How I was going to feel after I did what I did. How I was going to feel after I... Um, expressed to them or, you know, mustered up and said, hey, I apologize because I'm a grown woman. I apologize. Um, I was wrong. I could have handled this better. I could have handled that better. So with that being said, um, that's a little small piece as to how I got here today.